Testing, testing, one, two, three. Is it working, yeah. Natasha? Oh, lovely. <laughs> right, take two. <laughs> so I'm Ruth Mills, and I work as a lead Java developer at Connect Group, and I'm currently on a project for Jaguar over by Birmingham Airport in Trinity Park. And my presentation tonight is on Timeleaf and Timesheet, which are two um, very closely related Java view layer technologies that I previously used on a project for Land Rover last year. And I'll just give you a quick overview of what Timeleaf is. So it's Java-based, so you're going to be ne like needing to use it within a Java stack. And um, it's got a template engine that will work with XML or XHTML or HTML5, but it's also very extensible. So if you want to use it like with, with some sort of like different markup language, then you could write some Java that would let you do that. And what we're using it for, we're, replace, we're using it to replace JSPs for the view layer. And um, I'll come on to why we're doing that, but it's about um, making it easier for front-end developers to develop HTML files without us Java geeks getting in the way too much. So we can like work fairly independently of each other, ideally. And it also works really well with Spring MVC, which we use on the Jaguar and Land Rover projects at Connect. And it works really well with Maven because we use Maven as our build and package management tool. So it's really quite easy to add to your POM file with Maven. And what's really good about it is that um, if you're a front-end developer, you can just write bog-standard vanilla HTML rather than having to like faff with JSP pages and stuff that's got all like nasty Java markup in it and stuff. And um, the next slide's got an example time leaf document just to show you the sort of formatting that we use. It's just got a box standard table markup. And um, the way it works is if you've got HTML5 data attributes, so the first one there, it's got a data th text. And what that's doing, it's mapping onto a Java bean. So you might have um, a messages bean that's got headers in it, and you want to get the name out of that bean. So when you're developing the HTML5, you just like put some dummy data in there, like name and price, etc. But then when you run it within the Java web app, the Timeleaf engine will then replace name with the real data from that Java bean. And then you can also loop through, um, if, if you've got like um, several rows that you want to iterate through, like you've got a list of products, then you can define a variable called products, prod that like iterates through the loop list of all products. And then for each product in that list, you can then output like the name of the product, etc. And then you can even like do formatting, so you can format that as a proper price with like decimal points, etc. And the way it works, like I said, it uses um, HTML5 data attributes. So within HTML, if there's like some case where you want to output a particular block of HTML if some condition is met, then what you would do is just like use the data thif attribute. And then if that condition is true, it will output that div and everything inside it. Otherwise, it completely omits that div from the document. And there's also an attribute called data th each, and that's where you're like iterating over a collection or a list. So in this case, it's an unordered list. So for each um, each entry in that list, it will create the li tag for you, and then output the contents. And then data th text, that's where you want to output HTML escaped text. So it'll, it'll do things like if it's got an ampersand, it'll change that to ampersand and put the semicolon after it. And again, you've, you can put like dummy text in as an HTML developer, just like to sh like lower up some text just to see how it will look. And then when you run it in the Java web app, it will replace that with the contents of that variable from your bean. And then thu text is very similar, except that it outputs unescaped text. So you'd, you'd use that, for example, if you've got like some HTML formatted rich text from a CMS that you just want to output as is. And um, when you've got like HTML attributes, so for example, you've got an image with the SRC tag, then you've got a data th SRC tag that will replace your, your like dummy test URL with the actual one from the Java. 
and likewise for your alt tag you've got data th alt and uh, time leaf actually gives you data th attributes for every attribute type that you'll encounter in HTML5 but you can also use time leaf to set custom attribute values as well so like within um, HTML5 we use a lot of data attributes for like setting custom things for the JavaScript to do things with so you've got data th atra for that and then what you're doing is you're saying what the name of the attribute is in that case data example and then just setting it to some value off the Java and um, to extend this even more Adam Perry at Connect Group is the chief technical architect came up with an extension called timesheet and what that does it uses like CSS3 selectors so you don't even have to add all those data attributes to the HTML to get it to work instead you just write a separate CSS3 file with the extension .tss and do all your, your mapping in that instead and that's that's what we've done on Land Rover so the front end developers they can just like develop the HTML they don't have to worry at all about how it's going to map onto the Java code and so if you've got like that test file that I showed you before that's got them like the name and the price and the list of things you just um, put a link tag to a TSS file that the Java code will then read and process for you and in that case it just looks like this so it's using the CSS selectors to like target the first child in that header and then replace that with the name and then the second th tag with the price and then you've got your loop iteration for your products again so you're defining a variable called prod and then for each product you're outputting the name and the price again and the main advantage of like timesheet especially over time leaf is that um, we've also got a TDD framework so you can write unit tests so you can um, so every time you replace something in the HTML with some values from the Java you can write a unit test to make sure that it works properly so we've got like a really trivial example you've got a div tag that's got two paragraphs inside it and um, we want to like do a test that sets the first paragraph so you just create a test bean and uh, put your expected test result in there and um, there's then a syntax is that you've got, you just like create a, a hash map of your test data so you put my bean inside that map and then this HTML elements so that's part of the test framework so it just gives you the path to the HTML and then the list of things to replace and then you've just got your standard JUnit assert format so it's asserting that the first paragraph is just a single element rather than like more than one element and it's got um, only text containing like the expected text and then the TSS for that first paragraph it's just got p colon first to type to find you the first paragraph in that document and that's using th text so that's like the CSS equivalent of the data attribute that I showed you before and it's just setting it to test, test text one off that bean and then to do it proper TDD what you would do you'd first run that unit test and then watch it fail so if you've got Eclipse or STS you get like your red test bar and then you'd add the TSS to that file rerun the test and then it should get a green bar and that sort of process has been like really useful if somebody on the front end team makes a change to the HTML and then you know when they commit it to SVN Jenkins runs the build and then it'll fail the test because the back end developer hasn't realized that it's changed so the back end developer needs to go back and then change that CSS file to make it map onto the right node in that document and then for the second paragraph it's just really similar except it's doing it on last of type instead of first of type there's an error in my thing that should say last of type instead of first of type so whoops but again the good thing about the TDD process is that because that's wrong then when you run the test it'll fail so then you'd realize oh dear I've made a mistake and then go back and correct it so the main advantages of timesheet is like I've said it's great if you're using TDD you can just get somebody else to do the HTML and they don't need to know anything about the Java data binding so they don't need to modify that at all and it also works really well on agile teams that you know Jamie's going to do a talk about agile after the break 
and um, at, like on the teams at Connect working on the JLR projects, we normally have like different front end and back end developers on the team working together. So this like helps help stop people treading on each other's toes. And it's open source and it works with Maven, so you could just add it to your Maven POM file really easily. And I've got a list of further resources. There's the Timeleaf website, and then there's the GitHub account for Timesheet, which is the extension that Adam Perry created that uses the CSS syntax. Oh, and that's it. <laughs> Any questions, please? <laughs>